Outdoor Oklahoma, to help you enjoy and better understand your outdoor world. And now your host... Yeah, it's getting the sun up pretty good. Y'all about ready? Yeah, man, can't you imagine Kenny and Dave down there on that river, how cold they must oh, be? It's damp, yeah. Get up on that ridge, John, where we'll be in the sun a little bit, that'll feel better. Oh yeah, that'll make a world of difference. I'm gonna snap some caps through this to Me and Cliff's gonna go back up on that ridge. There's sign up yonder. Yeah, if we catch somebody running that scrape trail up there, we just might catch old Mr. Big Buck. Okay, my town gun's ready now, y'all. Get a little dab of priming powder in here. And I am loaded. Okay, out of red, let's go do the, the trick today. What fog something coming off the river, isn't it? Like that moving water and all the rocks. They'll probably catch more fish than we'll see deer, but that's okay. About noon. Yeah, around noon that'll be good. That way we can work out the ridge fairly decent shape wait, wait. and meet up about noon. Y'all wait on me. Well, come on, young. I'm hurrying. Hang on, I'm coming. Well, it looks like it's starting out to be another pretty day in outdoor Oklahoma. And this week we're in a particularly beautiful part of the state, far southeastern Oklahoma in McCurtain County. Why don't you come along with us for a little bit of fishing on the mountain fork, some camping along its banks, and a little hunting along the ridges of the Washita Mountains. Well, I wonder if any of our boys had any luck this morning. Yeah. Prime time right now. Sure is. Bees hunting on a real good scrape line. Could we hear them from here? No, they're several miles south of us. And a little back west. Cliff and John are on another good scrape line just just across the creek bottom from where D is. Kind of bordered by a couple of clear cuts. And they haven't hunted this area, have they? I don't believe they've hunted this far south. You kind of put them onto this area a little bit? Uh-huh. It hadn't been been disturbed too much by anybody so far. It may produce something. It's sure a perfect morning to be on stand. It's a perfect morning to be anywhere. Out here on the river, hunting, no wind. 
don't know if the fish agree or not, but uh, maybe they will a bit later. Boy, that looks good over there. I got to throw in there a time or two. Go ahead and throw in there real quick. Oh. Oh, he's a big, he's a small mouth anyway. Yeah. yeah he's a little in any. Man, maybe we can find Grandma here in a minute. Okay. Yeah, just a little dink, but he's small mouth, marked up pretty. Get the hook out of him, thank you. Get back here. Woo! All right, let's go get some more. Get something that counts. I hit that little spinner, maybe uh, maybe we'll have to go down to spinners to do any good. Well, there is something to be said for those days when the fish aren't just jumping in the boat. If it's the kind of day where the conditions are nice, but we're not catching a lot of fish, our thoughts often turn inward about why one just enjoys the out of doors so much. Or maybe what it is we enjoy about what we're doing in it that we find so intriguing. It's, uh, it really is hard to explain to anybody uh, what kind of thrill deer hunting is until you, you go deer hunting, and uh, especially with the black powder rifle. It's, uh, it's a little more primitive, and um, we live in such a technological world anyhow that, that any time you can get back to basics, it's, it's a good thing. And uh, the, uh, the black powder rifle is more basic, and the bow is more basic. And uh, when I get out in the woods, it's, uh, it's not the, I'm there to take a deer if the opportunity presents itself, but I'm there just to be there more than anything because um, the sights and the sounds and the smells, and, and I can't describe them to somebody that hasn't been there, but if somebody's there, then they know what, what I'm talking about. Good fresh rub. And two scrapes within 25 yards of each other. It's a good area. Quite a few acres. This is probably a smaller buck. Probably coming out of the clear cut over there, using this ridge. Probably making a morning run. Probably going up the ridge. This big area. It's funny how you change over the years. I used to be so wrapped up and trying to kill a deer. And now it doesn't really matter whether you kill one or not, just as long as you get to go. You build a, the fun is building a nice gun, 
getting all ready for the hunt and doing the scouting of the area. And then just going out and sit in the woods and watch the squirrels and the turkeys. And if you get a deer, okay. If you don't, okay. Just the quietness. And get away from the rat race. Get away from the telephones, TVs. Just have a little vacation. There he is. Oh, that's a little one. He's a little bit bigger than that first one, though. Yeah, he's not a, not a big boy. He's pretty, though. That's a nice fish. Yeah, a little line side. Looks like a Kentucky, maybe. Grow up, fella. said that that's a it's kind of a morning feeding area and they're bedding down during the day over in that clear cut yeah so if you want to go ahead and swing up that way and maybe there's a line of them along here what do you reckon that sounds like a good idea yeah well, if we jump anything he's, he's going to head that way you'll be out there a little more open along through there great right. i'll get right in the edge of that clear cut okay just take it real slow okay. and work it down to there. Maybe we can ambush him. Okay. See you in a little while. All right. Good spot to sit here just for a little while. mornings. Just cool enough to make your nose tingle. Trees beginning to turn. Those pines smell so good. This is what it's all about. even see an acrobatic gray squirrel before the morning's over. Little boogers just crack me up. Oh, man, the sun coming through those trees is so beautiful. Thank you, God, for giving me another year to come to this. been fun, but I guess some guys probably back camp by now. Yeah, they're probably all in, and I'm getting hungry. Maybe yeah. Dave fix some pancakes. Maybe David and, and Ken got some fish, too. Yeah. yeah. Let's back. Let's do it. Yeah. It's a 
They're gonna hold in there. Yeah. I'll be able to stay right here. We may not be able to set here. Huh? We may not be able to set right here. Fish on. Hey, fish, fish on. Good fish. Yeah. What we got here? Where is he? There he is. Good job. Way to go. Uh -oh. Quick release. Quick huh? release. That's all right. Huh? <laughs> Where's he at? <laughs> See anything hanging up? Good. Where's the big deer? Well, one thing for sure. It was a beautiful morning. Not a whole lot of fish boated, but you can bet that everyone had had a whole lot of fun, whether fishing or hunting. Camp is a perfect place for a nice midday break, an exchange of stories. There are always plenty from everyone, and usually people find the time to pay a little attention to the preparation of the evening meal. And then after that, a chance to have a little friendly shooting competition. I missed! <laughs> I missed! Stand up there, John. I'll make a fool out of myself just so you get anybody. You've got to tell me how to do it, right? Right. Yeah, I, can, I can do that. I can, I can do we that. need to make a point that he's one of them old nipple yeah. hugger guys. Yeah, I'm shooting the town guy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No point. <laughs> don't want to wave the muzzle around. Well, yeah, yeah. You don't do that anyway. Hey, Jim. Thing in the world. 
but y'all got me excited. You even got a balloon. Well, That's double good. <laughs> Flinch. That's the probably the normal, yeah, normal yeah. reaction. The normal thing is to flinch. Traditional. Either that or you got every day of the season to hunt and you're gonna. This is a necessary part of this thing. A lot of people are just gonna like. To me it's a good time to sit and reflect on your gun and what you've done with it that day. Especially if it's a gun that you've built yourself. You sit and look at it, caress it, look at the lines, how everything flows together. It just seems like a natural part of being out here in the woods. It's a real special feeling to come out here with a rifle you built with your own hands, carry a shooting bag that you or one of your friends has made, shoot balls that you cast yourself, and try to relive this sport as it was done in the past when it wasn't a sport, when it was a way of life, and that's how they fed themselves. Just makes you stop and appreciate what people went through. It's kind of like we sit around and read these mountain man books and you'll be reading about this old boy wading in on one of those old cold creeks and, and uh, of course in the winter times usually when you have the most time to read but that old boy will be talking about how cold his feet are and the first thing you know you're over in the blanket <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> the streets, you know? and then he gets to sitting around the campfire. staring into the campfire yeah, it uh, usually signals the end of a long day of field all right, but you seldom ever hear anyone complain of being tired around the campfire. Instead, the flame seems to hold us all well beyond our bedtime, reminiscing, sharing experiences, and just enjoying the good times. This campfire will subside, but the memories of this day will surface again somewhere down the road around another campfire, and after another fine day of field, somewhere in outdoor Oklahoma. Stop and think about how just how damn fortunate we are in, in the United States to be able to go out and do stuff like this. A lot of countries can't can't go hunting. You bet. Right? Yeah, that guy that was on uh, from Poland, wasn't it, on y'all's show? Mm -hmm. He said they had to complete a 200-hour course of some kind before they were even kind of like a, novices. Be apprentices, and, and, yeah, and it was amazing what they what talk about a hunter education yeah. course. Mm -hmm. But it was also interesting if they did get to hunt, even in those communist countries, certainly. Yeah. If, you, if you could afford it, the cost of guns and stuff is astronomical. Hopefully it won't get to that point here one of these days where we all can't afford to do it. You just have to do cheap things like shoot black powder. Yeah. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with that.